Hello everyone, it's Fred Staub. We're glad you're with us for another edition of Cruise Control. Hello to our Facebook and YouTube audience and wherever you watch this show. We're glad you, you do. We're here every Saturday at this time, which happens to be 10 a.m. where we're sitting. We're because Les Jackson is also along with me. And Les, we've yes, got indeed. an interesting hour uh, that includes things like, uh, well, kind of pronosticators for the auto industry. Uh, yep. And then we, we're going to focus on a uh, very affordable car. Uh, that is out from Nissan. It is so good uh, in 21 that they didn't change it at all. They did bump the price up $100. We're talking about the Nissan Versa. But if you need a yes. second car or or <clears throat> someone you know is uh, you know wants their first car, this is really good. We'll talk about that. And then we're going to talk tech in the future. Algorithms, not engineers, will make your vehicle fun to drive as far as steering feel and how it handles and how it rides right so uh, we'll talk about that and then um used cars that cost more than the same new model we did this list a few months back and we're back with the new edition it's, and it's it's growing <laughs> it's growing <laughs> mainly it's growing because you can't find the new ones <laughs> that's right because why so, would you buy a two-year-old car for more when you could get the brand new one that it's probably got better stuff on but if you can't buy the brand new one you might pay more for a used one which frankly would kill me i'll tell you <laughs> it's just getting so so strange it sure is so we're going to talk about that and more on cruise control i'm fred staub he is les jackson and we will be right back so stay tuned we're going live well we're live actually now so <laughs> we'll, yeah, right. we'll, we'll be back with the show in a couple of minutes don't forget check us out at cruisecontrolradio.com check us out at our Facebook page, YouTube page, Instagram, all that and more. We'll be right back. Your on-air automotive magazine with co-hosts Fred Staub and Les Jackson. Control. Everything you need to know about new and used cars. Control. Industry news will fix or repair your car on the air. Control. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the wheel. Now, your ride is about to begin control. because you're on cruise control. Cruise control. Cruise control. And hello, welcome to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. It's mine too. My name is Les Jackson. The other guy uh, on the other screen is Fred Staub. We are here each and every week live covering the auto industry. And of course, sad news, Fred, um, because we're approaching the Christmas uh, time and 
I just found out that the shortage of vehicles is so bad that Santa has to rent a sleigh this year. <laughs> he bought a used sleigh and he had to pay more for it. <laughs> exactly. Than his brand exactly. new. This, we're uh, in big trouble. Yeah. D- does Santa's sleigh have a lane keeping assist? Uh, well, that's Rudolph. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's get started here, Les. We're starting out with a story about some auto industry pronosticators. I don't know what would they wear on their head. Remember how uh, uh, the big John- uh, the big aluminum foil uh, cone. I thought a tire, maybe, or maybe a uh, tire would be good. Maybe one of those cones from the uh, road. But yeah. when will the auto industry go to at least fifty percent electric vehicles? We're going to have kind of some comments from the auto execs when they think it will happen and why it will yep. happen. Lots of uh, lots of. Uh, disagreements between them. But anyway, we'll talk about it. Meanwhile, over at Nissan, their terrific, really uh, first-rate, inexpensive Versa mm-hmm. uh, is a great deal. And it still is a great deal. And you can actually get a few. <laughs> you may not be able to get your color you want. <laughs> but anyway, they just priced out the 2022 and it's only a, just a few dollars more than before yeah it's a great vehicle if you're looking for a first vehicle or just really inexpensive transportation with up-to-date yeah. safety features we like to highlight those for our listeners and then we're going to talk tech in the future algorithms and machine learning will kind of determine how your vehicle feels on the road the steering feel the braking capability how yep. it how it handles we're going to talk about the technology that's involved with that which uh, it won't be an engineer going out like, let me change the tie rod ends, right, Les? Exactly. Or, the you know, this shock rate uh, just feels a little bit too stiff. Re- readjust the bolt. Yeah. You know what it means? It also means more new vehicles quicker because yep. you probably yep. won't have to do those calibration drives, right? Exactly. Yeah. Some Some engineers like those, though. I'm sure they'll... They'll miss them for sure. But uh, all that and more when we get rolling on this edition of Cruise Control. And that is the show that you have dialed into. We appreciate you listening. Uh, Don't forget to check us out at CruiseControlRadio.com. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, find the YouTube page. A lot to do there. So, (laughs) Uh, Yeah, pretty much... uh... Pretty much any, well, even, we even have a big uh, can, a soda can on a string uh, <laughs> running out our windows. So, f- you know, for the low tech people, we're here too.
Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. Fred Staub and Les Jackson with you, buckled up, ready to tell you about what's going on in the auto industry. If you're out buying a vehicle, it's a bit of a different scenario. All of this year has a has a diff, been a different scenario uh, for people. Uh, I've had stories of people saying, I'm lucky I got a vehicle because somebody canceled it. Uh, and I happened to be there and the dealer told me, hey, yep. if you had been here an hour later or you just said, oh, I don't know, I can't make it here today to give you the deposit, he said it would have been gone in an hour. So, Our, our friend who ordered a uh, Maverick, mm-hmm. uh, he this, <laughs> this week, you know, normally you get, you can check on- online to see where your order is. Sure. He got an uh, email, a generated email from Ford this week that said, we can't tell you when your Maverick will be produced. Yeah. That's a heck of a. <laughs> yeah, it used to be there like, uh, hey, thanks for week. the order. <laughs> thanks for the order. We hope yeah. to get you it sometime. But uh, yeah, this is an interesting article I came across. It's a Reuters article. Um, and it, it was kind of looking at what will be happening in 2030 right now the general consensus from this article is uh evs will be about 50 percent of the market by 2030 which is not far off Les jackson really not we're, we're almost in 2022 right That's now right. so eight years right that uh that's eight years goes a lot faster than people ever think Oh, I agree. I agree. Uh, it's scary. Um, so auto executives, this is, uh, it, this is a survey that was conducted by uh, the accounting and consulting firm KPMG. And they say that auto executives feel just over half of the new vehicle sales in the United States and China would be electric powered and could do so without receiving government subsidies i i don't see uh, how at, how the government subsidies can stay once it reaches no 30 percent. They, they can't they, they can't there's just no um, money for that how can the government buy you a car or buy well, a significant it, portion of it but they won't be necessary either you know once once every year 15 or 20 percent of the vehicles are electric mm-hmm. uh as you know, it takes over. Everybody starts buying them. People lose their uh, lack of knowledge about them. They lose their fears of whatever. Um, and, you know, well, hey, Bob up the street got one. That's pretty nice. I'm going to buy one. Sure. That's that's what, yeah. what sells vehicles. People saying, I mean, look, if I was looking for a vehicle and I would always walk up to someone in a parking lot and go, hey, that's a nice XYZ. How long you had it? Uh huh. You have any problems? Yeah. What was the dealer experience like? Right. Where'd you buy it? Oh, maybe I'll go to that dealer. You know. Okay. Thanks. You know. And uh, most people are were glad to do that. I don't know whether it's the same way today, but in the past, most people were glad to chat for five minutes about it. Right. Well, that's right. Uh, people research the features and all that online. So. Uh, yeah, I and and you know the big issues uh, about electric vehicles are the electric infrastructure, which is part mm-hmm. of the infrastructure program. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's important, just like it was a hundred years ago for gasoline. Um, where are we going to generate all this power? Well, it's it again. That's the infrastructure, and it's it's going to come. It's not going to come in six months. No, it, it happens when it has to happen. In other words, yeah. yes, it would be better if people built out this stuff with the idea like, oh, in five years, there's going to be much more demand. But that's unfortunately not how it works. That's not how we we do things here. <laughs> we do. We do. We do them like one month out. <laughs> we only react when it's a crisis. That's right. That's right. But uh what they said uh, to the automakers that were not buying into this, saying uh, that they did not think uh, this would would be happening in China and the U.S. and Germany, 
was Volkswagen and Toyota. Now, of course, yeah. Toyota is just getting into electric vehicles. They, they're an interesting case because uh, they are very focused in many ways on hydrogen. They feel that that has a play in there, t technically an electric car. I agree. Because it's, uh, it, it's a fuel cell. It's it's basically using hydrogen to to generate electricity on board. Uh, and then, and they think it's better for heavy trucks and things like that. Um, and then uh, Volkswagen. And Volkswagen actually has done a lot for electric vehicles, and we're going to see more and more from them. But we'll take a little bit more of a look at this KPMG survey. What do you think? When will we see more and more electric cars on the road? Two years, three years, five years? Who knows? We'll talk more about that when we come back on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control. We were talking about the future uh, electric vehicle um, market mm -hmm. population. And uh, that most uh, auto company execs believe about half of the vehicles sold will be, uh, by 2030, will be electric. I personally think it'll be larger than that. Mm. Uh, it won't be heavy trucks. I, but I think the general passenger market will be overwhelming electric. I also think you're going to see fleets like Amazon, maybe FedEx, mm -hmm. maybe UPS. They'll be big buyers of these short of these box truck delivery vehicles, you know, um, right. because I think it makes sense for them. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, 
I think that might be something you see a lot more of before you see people switching over uh, individually. Uh, although I do see a lot of electric vehicles around here. Uh, I, really I see do. quite a few. Yeah. And, and by the way, I just finished um, compiling uh, for the DC Auto Show the latest list of all of the electric, pure battery electric vehicles sold in, in the U.S. right now. And that's 38 different wow. uh, makes and models. 38. And that is just going to explode. Of course, you look at, we've been talking oh, about yeah. what's going on at Cadillac. They've got four or five models coming in. Uh, there's going to be, I believe, a new Lexus uh, EV crossover yep. coming in. Um, and a lot of crossovers. So obviously, the trend of crossovers is not going to go away just because electric vehicles. I are think coming. that 38 will double within the next couple of years. So interesting, this KPMG study said for China, some auto industry execs expect EV sales by 2030 to be less than 20% of that market, while others believe the world's largest market could be 80% electric by then. I would say it depends on the government there, because there the government can just say no more gas, gas cars, right? Well, yeah, but I think that's, that's unlikely. There's too much... Well, I mean, here in D.C., where I know that the uh, the fossil fuel industry has 3,000 lobbyists, um, for that to happen, I think, would be miraculous. Uh, I don't think you could just tomorrow eliminate it anyway. You know, it's no, going it's going to be. And then there are other people that say even. I mean, my other idea is we will see virtually every vehicle electrified, meaning hybrid, plug-in hybrid. Uh, right. I've found that some of the press cars I had, like recently a Jaguar, it didn't even call out that it was a hybrid. You had to, <laughs> you had to really search it out, and it was a mild hybrid. But I think virtually every car will be a hybrid. Every car with a gas engine will be a hybrid. I in think the future. so. If I were, if I had to buy a car tomorrow, um, <laughs> I, w I would say good luck, Lester Jackson, because <laughs> you, would tell me you might not what's find wrong it. With you. Yeah, <laughs> no, but I would buy. I'd buy a uh, the the car. I would go out, literally go out and buy would be a Honda Accord hybrid. Yeah, um, yeah I think all things considered, that would be the best choice. Yeah, it's a big sedan. It gets fifty miles to the gallon. It's comfortable. Yep. It's quiet. It's screwed Very together reliable. well. Doors work. <laughs> Trunk lid the goes paint, up. Paint is shiny. Roof doesn't come off. <laughs> yep. But uh, yeah, no, I I think we're going to see more of that. I think virtually you won't be able to buy a non-hybrid vehicle uh, yeah. in the lineups, and that will be the first step. I think you'll see a lot more plug-in hybrids, and and then uh, a lot more electrics. So uh, let's uh, let's talk about. Uh, Nissan, this is not a hybrid. I don't believe they have a hybrid version of this, but if you are looking for a car, I said a car, Les Jackson, uh, and you're looking for something that starts at $16,000, $16,062 for this car starting, right? That is the 2022 Boy. price for this vehicle. Um, it gets 40 miles to the gallon on the highway and uh, 27 in the city. Uh, so the costs for this Nissan Versa have only gone up $100 over the 2021 model. It's virtually a carryover, but we just like to highlight these vehicles since you don't have to spend $35,000, $40,000 to get good transportation. So... You look at these yep. numbers here, and, and even for the well-equipped model, which is the Nissan Versa SR, it's 19465 The SV starts at 18865 And all of these vehicles come with all of the um, safety features. That's one of the big things that Nissan does. So you're getting all that safety features. If you opt for the SR trim, you get things like Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, leather-wrapped steering wheel, six-speaker sound system, automatic climate control, LED headlights. So you think about this. This is a good vehicle for someone 
that, I mean, you could easily spend this much money for a used car, but this is a completely up-to-date, brand new, you're the first driver model. And I, I wonder if these are in inventory because, hey, it's not a crossover. It is a sedan, and it is a sedan that is really well equipped. Even that, you know, they probably are. Uh, I doubt you can buy the base model, right? But at but, the dealer, but um, you have families that wouldn't be buying it because they want an SUV or something bigger. Um, you got an awful lot of uh, recent college graduates, or you know, going into teaching jobs, or uh, you know, just other routine, non-huge salary jobs. Mm -hmm. Uh, this thing makes a lot of sense. And most of these people are commuting in an urban environment. So that it's not a long drive. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is it's cheaper to park it because it's not so big. Yeah. Make a great commuter car, wouldn't it? 40 miles to the gallon. Yeah. So. Oh, I would. Look, when I got out of college, I would love to have had one of these. Yeah. Well, there's just something we like to highlight. If you're out going out for a vehicle, like we say, you don't have to spend all the time for the $75,000 pickup <laughs> truck. Uh, That's right. Sometimes vehicles like this are a good bet, um, and they're, uh, you know, they're available out there. Uh, and yeah. it's uh, like the Toyota Tercel used to be. Toyota Tercel. Although I think this uh, Nissan Versa is a little bit, a little bit nicer. It's it's bigger. It's nicer. Yeah, it's a real deal. So one vehicle that won't be um, available as an electrified vehicle that soon is the Gleep. The Gleep. What is that brand? Gleep. That's a knockoff <laughs> of Jeep. Uh, right. But the Jeep Gladiator. I, I stuck those two words together, Jeep and Gladiator, to Gleep. Uh, but the Jeep Gladiator 4XE, uh, there's a report out now that this will not go on sale until 2024. Now, of course, the Gladiator is the pickup truck that you and I have had a chance to drive, the Wrangler pickup truck. Uh, and it is uh, the 4XE is the plug-in hybrid version of the Jeep. Uh, you should check out our YouTube page. I did a review of it, and um, it's uh, it's an interesting vehicle. It it, it is a plug-in hybrid. Gets twenty some odd miles of electric range when you plug it right. in, and then after that, it becomes a hybrid. It is the best mileage of any Jeep Wrangler, and apparently, it's uh, not going to go on sale until twenty twenty four. What they're waiting for is the refresh of the Jeep Wrangler itself. That will be the first first one to get refreshed, and then uh, they will switch over to the Gladiator. Um, right. So, But it won't look any different. <laughs> it, it, no. Because, no. because they don't want the, you know, the, the, the Wranglers ever to look different. Um, yeah. But well, wait, what do you suppose the price of that's going to be, considering the Gladiator itself is... Well, to me, really expensive. We'll talk about that when we come back on Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Fred Staub. He's Les Jackson. We'll be right back.
Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control. I'm Les. He's Fred. We were talking about the uh, the upcoming hybrid Gladiator, Jeep Gladiator, and uh, I was mentioning to Fred before the break that what about the price? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I just get a little shocked every time I see the price tag on a Gladiator. Yeah, they are up around fifty or more, yeah. depending on what you get. So th that is the only issue with the Jeep Gladiator 4XE. It's going to add some uh, money to that uh, vehicle. and yep, maybe uh, 60 I think that's possible. Uh, that does get 49 miles to the gallon in the Wrangler trim, but, of course, the Gladiator is about 500 pounds heavier and a little bit different aerodynamically. So we'll, we'll just have to see. Uh, what happens with that? But uh, let's talk about a another vehicle that has been making some waves, and that is the Ford Maverick. Of course, the Ford Maverick has morphed into a compact pickup, and, right. and uh, the base model, which is only front-wheel drive, the base model is a standard has a standard hybrid drivetrain. This is another smash hit for the folks at Ford. It's sold out. Yeah. That's no longer available to order for this year. According well, you know, uh, it's a great problem to have, but it's also a bad problem to have. Because mm -hmm. people get, as you know, uh, Americans are very impatient. Mm -hmm. And people kind of walk away. Yeah, well, I hope they wouldn't walk away from this vehicle. Of course, uh, it is a great starting price, uh, 19995 That is the front-wheel drive only yeah. hybrid model. If you want all-wheel drive, you have to go up for the optional 2-liter turbocharged four-cylinder EcoBoost. That gets you 250 horsepower. Uh, the hybrid powertrain has 191. Um. I'm kind of sad that they didn't make a hybrid with all-wheel drive. Maybe they eventually will. Because probably if I bought this little truck, I would want all-wheel drive. But to sell out all of them <laughs> in the first yeah. model year, it's not even a full <laughs> model year, is pretty darn good. When's the last time that happened to Ford? Well, the Mustang... Uh... In 1964. Yeah, and you can't count things like the GT and that because that was not the, you know, the GT car. Yeah. I mean, one GT of these Mustang. things where you come up with a product, you know it's going to be popular, and it's five times more popular than you ever dreamed. Yep. They, uh, that, great problem, but it, listen it to creates this. other. Ordering will reopen next summer. Ordering will reopen. <laughs> next <laughs> summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. thanks, I, thanks for your interest I asked about uh, driving this as to get a review I have not yeah, they're, they're just yeah. not in the fleet they can't get them they can't even no. they'd, if they got one they'd rather sell it than uh, give us one to review I think and that's happening with many different vehicles in the press fleets yeah it's they're like, selling them out from under us yeah exactly you sold two of your press cars yeah, that's right. So, it was a problem well, when they maybe, came to pick it up. That's right. Maybe I'll go to a dealer and test drive one. No, because the dealer doesn't have any. That's right. And he said, "Come back, some come back next summer for that Ford Maverick Hybrid, and maybe we can talk about ordering one." Well, I mean, when has that happened? Normally, they'd be like, "Hey, I got ten on the lot. You know, do you like gray? Do you like red? You know." That's right. We, we've never seen this. We've been doing this for 30 years or more. Yeah. Uh, we've just never seen this. <laughs> I, I, I find it very interesting. I really do. But, but good for Ford that they have that. Uh, now, something's yeah. a, a little bit different situation over at Honda, and that involves some vehicles that have a recall. And this is a very big problem i have never had this happen to me on a on a road either slow or fast <laughs> highway or local
But have you ever right. had a hood fly up and and block your windshield while you're driving? Uh, actually, I have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But and it and it wasn't pleasant. I would say it would not be pleasant. Um, you can't see anything, so you have to act quickly. Look under it. Yeah. And and get off the road. Yeah, put your flashers on and say, I have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't break the windshield. But did, did it dent the hood? Because I knew I knew someone it, that had that happen and it didn't it, it smashed the top of the hood. It didn't it didn't uh break the it, windshield though. It actually bent the hood in half. <laughs> so you had to get a new hood. Yeah. Well, I went to the junkyard and I wow. got a new hood. And a new latch. Yeah, I would say latch would be key. Well, that's what we're talking about over at Honda, and it's on some of their really nice models. The The Pilot, the Ridgeline, and the Passport could potentially have their hoods come open. This is something rare for Honda to have something like this. Yeah. And uh, the recall covers 2019 Passports, 2016 through 2019 Pilots, and 2017 through 2020 Ridgeline. Almost 725,000 vehicles. Uh, hmm. It basically is a faulty seal between the hood and the grill. Air entering the gaps in the seal can cause buffeting at highway speeds. And the vibrations from this can cause minor damage to the hood latch striker. And then it can cause stress fractures. Uh, to the striker and cause it to separate from the hood completely, allowing it to fly open. Uh, you think about that, that little rubber gasket that's in there, you think, well, that's just there to keep water out. But apparently it's also there to keep your hood from, uh, your hood latch from detaching from the rest of the hood, right? There's a lot of lift, you know, uh, in your car when you drive. Uh, you know, you got a flat bottom and basically a curved top. That's a wing. Yeah. So uh, the other solution yeah. would be to just uh, put uh, gaffer tape all around the edge of duct tape. <laughs> and uh, that would help your aerodynamics well, out. But uh, we're not, would... if you have one of these vehicles, once again, uh, it uh, they are all Honda vehicles. Uh, it is. Uh, 2019 passports 2016 to 2019 pilots 2017 to 2020 ridge lines if you have any of those you'll probably be getting note from uh the folks over at uh, honda yeah and, and they will either reinforce the hood latch striker attachment point or replace the hood entirely if it's beyond repair i would uh, kind of not like that because will the paint match you know, that's what I'm thinking. If that's well, it's pretty good chance it will. Yeah, a newer um, vehicle, but, uh, but you know, in the old days, <laughs> the dealers would have just put a bolt through the hood. <laughs> that's right. How about <laughs> you know, how about we should make fun of this because it, it is serious. But how about just a zip tie to hold it? Hold it. Down? <laughs> they could do right, great well, things with zip ties. No, you'd need you'd need about ten of them. Yeah, you need about so 10 it would look like Frankenstein sewed, you know, hood the pins. head on. You could go old school and put hood, hood pins. pins. Well, you know? that's why race cars had hood pins. Yeah, because you don't want to lose. You don't want to be going down the back straightaway at over a hundred miles an hour, and the hood comes up because there's not much no. you can do. You you don't want to lift right out of the throttle, but you don't want to keep going either. So. Um, so anyway, if you have one of those vehicles, make sure. Uh, you heed the notice when you get it and uh, and take care of that. We were talking about Nissan earlier, about the Versa. Here's a vehicle that, uh, I to me, uh, this looks like I used to have uh, all kinds of die-cast cars. I had, I had Corgis. I had Matchboxes. I had um, Hot Wheels. And then we had Johnny Lightning cars. This vehicle <laughs> from... Yep. Nissan looks like a Johnny Lightning car. And it is we we've talked a little bit last week about their area um con uh, their area it's not a concept it's a uh, electric crossover. It's a beautiful vehicle. Uh but they've come up with a single seat 
version of this using the area's drivetrain. Uh, and it is just kind of a technology demonstrator to get people interested. Beautiful body on this thing. Uh, it's sort of like a Formula One car, I guess, sort of. Uh, it's, it's hard to describe, but uh, this sure is to show it. what you can do with their powertrain. And it's to kind of also highlight their Formula E uh, operations. And uh, just an interesting thing uh, to see. It has the illuminated V-Motion grille familiar to anyone that's driven a Nissan. But uh, something cool from the folks over at Nissan. Probably won't be seeing it in your dealership anytime soon. But that's okay. It's just cool. And we're going to be right yeah. back with more Cruise Control. After this, I'm Fred Staub. He's Les Jackson. Stay tuned and check us out at cruisecontrolradio.com.
Cruise Control. Welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine with Fred Staub and Les Jackson. Don't forget to check us out every week at this time so you can get up to date on new vehicles, pricing information, technology, the history of Les Jackson's Bolt Collection. That's an exciting one. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Bolt and Fastener Collection. Um, Whitworth threads. Whitworth threads. Sounds yep. sounds like uh, sounds like a band. Whit the Whitworth. Threads. It does sound like a band. That yeah. was a British uh, thread gauge that drives people crazy when you're trying to match those piece those bolts. Hmm. Well, um, let's talk a little bit of tech here. This comes from Volkswagen, and they had a talk on vehicle dynamics this week. Um, and of course, vehicle dynamics are kind of a subjective thing. Like you and I like heavier feel in a steering system. Right. While other people would say like, what's wrong with this vehicle? It's, it's so stiff. Uh, we might, we like a suspension that is both stiff, but does not have your head hit the ceiling. Right. When not you go over a shaker. bump, not a bone shaker, you know, super ultra stiff, no flex. Uh, no sidewall on tires. And all of this is subjective. People like it set up different ways. It's like a race car. People like it set up different ways, you know, uh, oversteer, understeer, things like that. In the past, this has been the job of engineers that yep. kind of set it up the way they like it. Uh, but now uh, it might be more related to artificial intelligence and machine learning and Volkswagen saying this will be something that will kind of be researched by these machine learning systems and they'll determine uh, how you how the vehicle feels. And also, it's a lot. There are a lot more parameters since everything will be electronic. There will be steer by wire, of course, brake by wire has already been happening and even sound. Um, of the vehicle, which electric vehicle, which is going to be, I think, a big area where we'll see a lot of innovation. Um, so I think uh, I think this is interesting that they feel they're kind of plugging in to computers, Volkswagen, what makes people like certain cars, like the Golf GTI. What do we like? We like the way it, it can scoot around. It feels very European. Um, and, and they're basically uh, going to have a 15-way setup for the suspension between super soft and super stiff. And I'm wondering if they're using technology in a sense that, hey, we know certain percentage of male drivers like the vehicle to feel this way, and then it will kind of set that up yep. as a baseline for you, and then you can dial further from there. I mean, this... I mean, I remember when steering feel was a big issue. They always overboosted steering in cars. And I hated that. You didn't know where the car was. Is it what, what lane or the other? You well, know? if you remember in the 60s, uh, there was a Chevrolet power steering TV ad. I think it was Hugh Downs, the announcer who did it. But he showed how easy it was to steer by tying the end of a piece of thread to the wheel and holding it by the spool wow and and turning the wheel with, the, with and you could break a piece of thread with about a three pound pull right uh that was crazy over boosted wow yeah it's just not to me I, I you don't feel in control but some people don't like that they they want it yep. so so that's kind of how this is going to happen and there's going to be many more parameters that you can set on a vehicle uh, and make it feel different uh, than you know what uh, what uh, you have in the past. So more more tunability. It won't be just the car. It'll be it'll be just the automotive equivalent of of modern showers uh, because the, all the showers are temperature compensating. So you know you set the temperature you like, and it keeps it no matter what else is going on in the house. And then the next person takes the shower, they like a different temperature. 
but it will be able to identify the person. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, here's an interesting uh, update. Uh, we did this a little bit uh, back a little bit, a few weeks ago, and, and IC Cars has come out with another edition of this. Best cars to buy new, not used. Uh, Tesla Model Y. If you buy one used, you'll spend 14.5% more, about $8,245. <laughs> Why would anyone do that? Toyota Tacoma, you'll spend 12% more for used truck over, over new. The new costs $4,567 less. <laughs> well, trucks, trucks, I understand, because when you need them, you need them. Dodge Charger, 9.8% used more than new tesla model 3 9.2 more used it's really a weird time isn't it i mean you look at this it things. is weird but of course with the new one you're paying a premium for most of them also why would you do this toyota corolla 4.6 percent more because you can't used. get you can't get a new one and a new one would be a thousand dollars less. No, but you can't get it, which means if they if the dealer has one, you're going to pay two or three thousand more for well, the that, new one. Maybe that's what it's taking into account because I've heard more and more people saying dealers are just really cranking it up, uh, saying, "Hey, market adjustment." Uh, I I know this for a fact because I've been told this by the dealers association that the car dealers in this country are making more money today than they have ever made in history. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, remember so, that. So in general, there is no dealing whatsoever. No deals. And you don't even get to pick your car. You walk in, I need a car. <laughs> okay, we <laughs> have this dually pickup for you. Well, I, I, I have to park in a garage. Uh, nope. We have the dually pickup. <laughs> the sticker <laughs> says seventy, but your actual price is one twenty-five. <laughs> Boy, uh, that's a fun experience. <laughs> it's, it's, it truly is. Is, yeah, that's what's happening. Wow, wow, that is that is that is something else, man. Something else. Hey, uh, Mopar's got some gifts for you, Les, and I feel that mm. we should buy Mike Mark Warman of Gra Graveyard Cars this. It is the ugly sweater, Mopar or no car. Uh, I'm sure he has a few of those, of course, Mark Warman, Mopar <laughs> expert and uh, that... restorer. But Mopar, uh, it's at wearmopar.com. They ha of course, Mopar has all kinds of parts. They're celebrating uh, 80 years of uh, operation and uh, they have all kind of parts to uh, accessorize your vehicles but now you can accessorize your body with an ugly Christmas sweater it's blue checkerboard uh, yep I don't know what that looks like a hockey puck on that I don't know what it's that considered looks. it's considered legit that that sweater is considered legitimate grounds for a divorce <laughs> You, you gotta you gotta imagine Mark Worman has one of those. I, I I can see him in that. I'll bet he wears one on his show. I bet he wears one on his show. Yeah, uh, but it, it it's got him written all over. If you never watched that show, it you does. have to. It's it's pretty amazing. Uh, it is. It's entertaining. It's entertaining, and if you are a Mopar fan, he can tell you. You know, he can go through each vehicle and tell you if it is original or isn't. I mean, even yeah. if. It's, it's just an amazing show. Good show. All right. Well, ugly sweaters aside, it's time for us to say thanks for listening to Cruise Control. We appreciate it. Don't forget to check us out at cruisecontrolradio.com for the podcast, other info. Time for me to say I'll see you down the road. Bye.